Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about Redbird matches. These are Strike Anywhere matches that are made in Canada and sold in Canada. Unfortunately, they're kind of hard to get in the United States here, or at least expensive whenever you can get them. Uh, but we're going to be testing these out today, and I'm going to be showing you a couple things that you might have in your camping kit, bushcraft kit, hiking kit that uh, you can get them to, to go off of pretty easily. You know, these, these are true Strike Anywhere matches. I know a lot of people out there have complained that Strike Anywhere matches aren't Strike Anywhere anymore. Um, these are, and these are actually pretty fantastic. Uh, let's start off with just using the box. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't using enough pressure there. But, um, yeah, so there's the box to begin with. I'm going to start off here. I've got an axe I rehafted and a pretty polished head on this. But as you can see, I mean, even though it's pretty polished, it's, it, it's not rough at all. It's actually a very smooth surface, even though it's got that nice patina on it. It's, uh, for surfaces like that, what you want is a long runway so that you can really get up that friction to strike. But there's that off the eye, off the actual haft, and uh, I can get them to go off the polyurethane area here as well, but uh, it takes a couple tries, so I'm just going to skip that. We've got flint and steel here. Uh, steel's made by Lisa West at Wolf Creek Forge. This is O1 tool steel, and uh, as you can see, it's so it's got that forged look. She's only sanded down that area there, so it really helps as a match striker. My finger uh, as a match striker on that sort of surface. So, get it to go off that. There's the flint. Here's a basic river rock. Got my fire steel here, which I've been able to get it to go off of, but it takes a couple tries. Um, basic Chinese fire steel, you know, got overseas, took about two weeks to get here. And the handle I made out of Osage Orange, which is actually uh, pretty smooth, it's pretty well sanded down, so it takes some real uh, real force to get it to go. Just knock that uh, off of a surface like this. But there you can see. Now, one of the videos I saw online showed this being struck off of 25 different surfaces, and I'll probably link to that below which it was a pretty good video, but it had uh, cutscenes between every single strike. And of course, it struck on the first time every single time, which is pretty unrealistic. So I decided to buy these to, uh, to find out whether they were really that good. Well, they are pretty good. They're not first time every time sort of strike. And of course, he was showing uh, popping them off his teeth and uh, doing it with his thumbnail. I can't do that. Uh, I'm sure with practice you could, but not me at least. So here, I know a lot of people take out into the bush uh, different kind of books, Bibles, or uh, trapping guides sort of stuff to you know keep them, keep them occupied during the night sometimes. So there's a book, basic paperback spine. Here's a multi-tool. This is the Leatherman Wave. Really like the Leatherman Wave. Carry it on my hip every single day, but there's the file. It'll go off that pretty well. Here's the diamond stone. Goes off that pretty well too. Which, uh, let me say, if you have strike on box matches, you want to carry them with you and you have something that's got a diamond stone, either the, uh, what is it, the Fall Nevin DC4 or this or you know there's uh multiple options by different companies but that 
is a, is a good option if you just want to carry your strike on box matches and something that you can strike them off of no matter what because the, uh, the outside here you know you need a container to go ahead and carry those in because if those get wet they're pretty much useless um, I found that you can light them off a 90 degree angle but the chances of you knocking off that white part that allows you to, to strike them anywhere is, uh, is pretty high so you can strike them off the blade going that direction or 90 degree angle like that the Spyderco bushcraft here actually has a pretty good 90 degree angle I'm probably going to go for a couple matches trying to get this done and something I found is instead of going off the 90 degree angle like that is it even easier it's got a real nice micarta grip here very uh, very polished and uh, you wouldn't expect it to go off it really easily but there you go better than the 90 degrees uh, here's an SE4 or EC4 however you pronounce it and it's got a much rougher micarta it's got the standard micarta there and it's been uh, just abraded to, to get it down to the same size but that's your standard micarta feel right there and well on that. I've got a Streamlight ProTac 1AA which is pretty good. I um, like the flashlight a lot but one of the nice things about it is it's got this anodized aluminum coating on it and the anodized aluminum coating actually oh, just knocked it off. Uh, strikes these things pretty well even though it's got a very small surface area. There you go. As you can see, a lot of these things that you keep in your pack are quite easy to, to strike off of. Now, for all the bushcrafters out there, I had to include this. This is the Mora. Um, I believe this is the HD version. So it's an uh, extra thick blade. But instead of using the blade, we're going to use that crappy sheet that comes with that. I actually prefer these sheets, but a lot of people don't. Um, but there you go right off that Mora sheath. <coughs> um, if you find a piece of dead wood, I don't know if wet wood would work, I'd have to try that, but this is just your basic dried out dead wood. This is some more Osage Orange that uh, I use for that. But you can go straight down some dead wood, processed wood, you can use a two by four, try it on that. And uh, the end grain. Oh. You can give them to go off the end grain as well. Uh, I know some people who have convex knives will end up carrying sandpaper with them out there. Now, I don't tend to use it off of the actual sandpaper side, the obverse. Um, but the back side actually works surprisingly well. Might as well try, but I think it abrades. Oh, there you go. But you can get it to go off of both sides of the sandpaper. Here's a build I have. Goes off of your basic paper. And uh, here's your water bottles. This is a stainless steel sub zero. And your analogy. Like I said about the axe head, there you go. Uh, those slicker surfaces, you really need more runway and more pressure. Um, and for those of you who have canvas packs, old military surplus, frost rivers, stuff like that. Oh. But this is a canvas um, cop that I picked up but it'll go off the canvas if you put it against 
a rough enough surface or a hard enough surface. But you've even got cardboard that'll go off of. Now, if you go with the grain like that, most likely you'll just dig into it using the pressure, and uh, you'll probably just break the tip off. But if you go washboard style on it, there you go, go off cardboard. So they really are strike anywhere matches. They'll uh, they'll go off of pretty much anything as long as you either have enough surface area to strike down or uh, a rough enough surface where you can use a, a very short area. Um, you can even twist them. I've done with my pocket knife. It takes a couple tries, but you can take it and just twist it in a rough area. Uh, on concrete, I've done it. You just spin it real quick like that. Uh, this has little star keys that you need to get all the screws out, and so it uh, works really well with that. That will be able to get it to go, but here you go. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, the Redbird matches are a great option. I really like them. It's Redbird at one word. Um, I found them on eBay, on Amazon, but like I said, they are pricey. If you have a Canadian neighbor, uh, a friend of yours who lives up there that can get you them, that would be a good option. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, thanks all for watching.